All right. So I had a great conversation with Chris Larson. He, he was so inspiring. Chris has a background in insurance sales. And um, he what's really cool is it, he wanted to figure out um, kind of what he wanted to do in the future and, and how he could get there. And he read 250 books, which is which is a feat uh, by itself. But he read 250 books and and found real estate to be a great way to build and, and grow his wealth. And uh, Chris is in a lot of different asset classes and, and what he likes, but he is uh, he, he thinks multifamily is the holy grail of investing and of commercial property. And so we, we definitely do a deep dive in, into Chris and his background, but um, man, had a great time talking to him. And uh, I know uh, the listeners will get a ton of value out of this uh, this episode. So thanks for listening. Welcome to Passive Investor's Playbook. I'm your host, Charlie Hardage. In each episode, we'll sit down with successful people that turn to real estate to build and grow their wealth. We do a deep dive into why they chose real estate and what makes it so attractive to them. We explore why people in their industry could also benefit from passively investing in real estate. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced investor, a doctor or a professional athlete, love your job or hate your job, Our show is here to help you build a profitable real estate portfolio while maximizing your free time and minimizing stress. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn from some of the best in the business. Welcome to Passive Investor's Playbook. All right. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Charlie Hardage, and you are listening to Passive Investors Playbook. Today, I have a very, very special guest, Chris Larson. Chris is the founder and principal of Next Level Income. He has been investing and managing real estate for over 20 years. While still a college student, he bought his first rental property at age 21. From there, Chris expanded into development, private lending, buying distressed debt as well as commercial offices, and ultimately syndicating commercial properties. Chris began syndicating deals seven years ago in 2016 and has been actively involved in over one billion, with a B, of real estate acquisitions. Chris is passionate about helping investors become financially free and financially independent. Chris retired after 18 years of medical sales. He resides in Asheville, North Carolina with his wife and two kids. Chris, I'm I'm really excited to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, before the interview, we, uh, we we talked a little bit about Asheville. Asheville's gorgeous. Um, I'm not too far away in Nashville, but uh, yeah. it, anyway, thanks, thanks for being here and, and coming on the show. Do you mind sharing with the audience uh, a little bit more about you and, and your company? Yeah, Charlie, thanks. I appreciate you having me here today. And yeah, we're not too far away from each other. And um, yeah, so you you had that was that was a great intro. You know, when I was uh in college, bought my first property and I went to Virginia Tech, not too, not too far up the road here. Um, and I really I just want to be a cyclist. I want to be a professional cyclist. So I started racing my bike when I was 14. And yeah, and went to Virginia Tech um because I was I was able to get in-state tuition and uh, it was a beautiful place to ride. They didn't have one of the top cycling teams, but we actually we actually did very well when I was there. Um, so raced my bike, and I said, you know, I, I don't really want to be an engineer, but I'll get an engineering degree. I'll go race my bike for. I gave myself like a five year window, and then I'll come back to school and figure out what I want to do. Well, the plane got derailed. And I talk about this in my book, which I'll, I'm happy to share a copy with you if you're listening today. Um, but between my freshman and sophomore years, my best friend, uh, he was going to be my roommate. He's a year younger than me. He was moving in with me. Um, he was my training partner. He was like a brother. His name's Chris as well. He passed away. He had a massive brain hemorrhage and oh died gosh. when we were up in Pennsylvania at a race. Um, so it was, it was horrible. You know, it's uh, for anybody that's listening, if, you know, if, uh, if you've lost somebody that's close to you, um, I went back to school and just rode my bike, put, put even more time into it. And I really used it a lot like my therapy yeah. and, um, it was good in some ways, but I, I wasn't doing great in school. Mm-hmm. Um, was probably depressed. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of friends. And one of the, one of the problems with endurance 
sports is that it really degrades your your hormone production and different things when you're training like at, at those levels you know 20 25 30 hours a week wow. and that's one of the reasons that the doping is such a big factor in cycling and endurance sports is because it's not that it actually makes you better it's that it allows you to sustain that level it basically allows you to maintain baseline um oh, wow. because you're you're just really breaking your body down. So after a year of this, I was, I was doing great on the bike. I was, you know, I was, uh, at the highest level as far as the amateur, um, cyclists can be, which is a category one. I was the team I raced for actually went pro the next year. I ended up stepping away from the sport though. I, I, I would completed a race and, and I love the sport, but I finished this race. I won the race. they would think I'd be like excited. I felt nothing. Mm. And if you really think about it, indifference, is the opposite of love. It's not hate, it's indifference. It's like, there's, there's no feeling at all. I came back to school and I'm like, why am I doing this to myself if I don't love what I'm doing anymore? So I, I quit, I sold all my bikes wow. and I just, I went, went back to being a normal college student or went back to being a normal college student, which I never had really done before. The problem was my grades weren't great. I didn't want to be an engineer. So I was kind of floating around out there trying to figure out like what I wanted to do with my life. But I knew one thing, Charlie, I knew that I didn't want to have regrets. I wanted to live life to the fullest. I wanted to honor the life that I had and the life that my friend Chris didn't have. And in that process of thinking about it, I said, you know what, you have to have financial means to do this. And I actually had had this entrepreneurial streak. My father was an entrepreneur, so maybe it's genetic. Um, but I it, cyclists don't make a lot of money. So I always had kind of like little side side hustles and little things going on. Um, so I was always interested in business and money and, and trying to create some sort of income stream. And I was introduced to investing and compounded interest in the stock market by the same family friend that introduced me to cycling. And I started to read and the Motley Fool was just getting started at the time, which was now a very popular website. I mean, then it was like four or five, six people. I actually was e wow. I like, I'd email back and forth with these guys, um, at the time. And, uh, I, I started day trading. So I started day trading. I was making like a thousand dollars a week as a junior in college, but it was very stressful. And anybody that trades in the stock market knows it's not, that's not passive income. That's not an investment. That is a job. And it's a very stressful job. And I was laying there at 3 a.m. one morning thinking, this is silly. Like, I don't want to be doing this 20 years from now when I'm 40 years old, if I have a family and all this, like, this is crazy. I got to find a better way. So I set off on this pursuit of knowledge. I read over 250 books. I actually got an MBA in portfolio management and in, um, in finance and portfolio management. And I said, you know what? Real estate, I can control my entry point. I can create value. It's got great tax benefits. And I bought my first property with $3,000 down because I got an FHA loan. It was a $90,000 townhouse, did a house hack. And that was how I got started on that journey. And then, yeah, as you mentioned today, um, we have over 3,000 units. We have 12 self-storage facilities. We have uh, 10 mobile home parks. We have about 30 locations with our express tunnel car wash business. Um, we also have some smaller projects that we do here around Asheville. Um, and I like to say real estate is a get rich slow game. So if you're just getting started or you only have a couple properties, take it from me. That's you're, you're doing great and it will come if you continue down that path. And hopefully we can talk about some ways that you can shortcut that and not have to take as long as I did. Man, that is a powerful story. <laughs> Um, okay. So you, you love cycling, uh, at the time yeah. you did it. A Still lot. do. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, you did it all the time. It, it was pretty much a almost full-time job. Uh, it's a I, lifestyle. I, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I personally never did uh, never played any sports in college. I did in high school and, you know, from the time I was five to probably 16, 17, 18. And, you know, even that was, was a lot, but that wasn't 25, 30 hours a week. And, you know, it was only maybe a couple hours a day. Um, have a, have a really, really good buddy that cycles and he does it just for kind of fun and, and, uh, uh you know, to stay in shape. But when he goes, he goes for three to four hours and yeah, it's, yeah. it's insane. Uh, so anyway, kudos, <laughs> kudos to you for good way for to put it. It is a little crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Kudos to you. Uh, that's something I could, uh, you know, probably don't have the patience for. I, I, I think, you know, maybe part of that um, helped when you did have your best friend, you know, slash kind of brother, 
yeah. uh, to do it with. But then after losing him, you know, so tragically, um, you, you brought up the word depressed and, you know, I, I, I thank you for, for sharing that because I, I, you know, don't want to talk about myself too much, but, uh, I actually have PTSD as well. And, and so I, mm-hmm. I really just recently kind of figured that out. And I, I think, uh, mental health is, is so important and vital and most people don't talk about it. So thank you for sharing that, Chris, you obviously yeah. didn't have to, but, uh, I'm, I'm sure you help other people just by just by talking about it, right? It makes it a little less uh, stigmatized. But um, look, I think I, I mean, yeah, I know, I know that's not kind of what the podcast is about, Charlie. But it speaks to something bigger, which is you know, there really is there really is a, a crisis in this country with respect yeah. to mental health. And you look at the number of suicides compared to other things; it's yeah. it's a tragedy, especially with young people. Um, and I don't think COVID and the lockdowns really right. help that trend, but. I think, you know, if we're, if we're more open to exploring that and having conversations, especially, I mean, look, as males, we're supposed to be macho and, right. you know, like not, not talk about these things, but the fact of the matter is we all have struggles. We all have challenges and it goes to kind of the core of even being a better investor, which is you need to be humble. You need to, you know, be willing to accept help from other people. And that's really what's going to help you um, accelerate in, in any area of your life. Yeah. So I think, you know, that same lesson, which is, Hey, you know, you can, it's okay to seek help from a mental perspective. Um, it's, it's also okay to seek help and it's great to seek help in, in terms of business. And isn't it wild that, you know, we get, we get coaches like, Hey, I want to be a better cyclist. I'll go get a coach or yeah. I want to get a trainer at the gym or, um, you know, you, you want to get a business coach, but, it's, you know, if you go to a therapist as a couple or you go to a therapist as an individual, well, isn't that just like a mental or a relationship coach? But right. some for some reason, it doesn't have the same value. So, right. um, yeah, I think uh, I and uh, I think it's very valuable to go and, and seek, you know, help in, in any area of your life. It's going to help you accelerate. Oh, totally agree with all of that, Chris. You know, if you're sick, you go to a doctor, right? But yeah. I think that word therapy or therapist is yeah. a stigma. Uh, anyway. Um, but yeah, thank thank you for sharing that because I I do think that's extremely powerful. Uh, the more people talk about it, especially males. Um, all right, so you um, after your best friend passed away, um, you you kind of lost the love for the sport, or at least for the competitive side of things. You still love cycling, but the com- the competition maybe. Um, I love what you said. You, you kind of went back to uh, and, and you thought to yourself, "Hey, I want to live life to the fullest." Um, you were introduced by a, a good family friend who, who also introduced you to cycling. You were introduced to investing and day trading and, and just more of the business side of things. Yeah. Um, I cannot believe you, you said you read, I think uh, it was 200 or 250 books. Uh, and you were, you set off in a pursuit of knowledge. I love that. I love that phrase. And I think um, a lot of people don't like reading or, or, you know, it's, it's harder to do, I think, than just watching TV. Um, oh, yeah. but you know, I, I don't like reading a lot, but I do like listening to audiobooks or, or podcasts and, and things yeah. like that, just where I'm learning. Um, and so man, amazing that you, you read 250 books and out of those 250 books, I'm not going to ask you to, to recap them, but, uh, it sounds like from that pursuit of knowledge, you, you learned about real estate. Is that, correct that's that's where yeah you're, absolutely you're yeah and I, look i mean i i still read a lot i try to read you know i i used to read a book a week now it's more like a book every other week mm-hmm. um and look you can what's cool is like you can go on amazon and i'll buy an ebook and then you get you can get the audible book that syncs to it and it's great yeah. you know and yeah. you know you can kind of get yourself used to listening at one one and a half times or 1.25, one and a half times speed, you can really get through some stuff. You know, if yep. you're walking or working out, um, you, you can do that. Um, but yeah, I, I found, I found real estate. I can't remember exactly like which book or, or what I read. I, I do know there was a book that kind of based my initial real estate investment strategy around, which was super simple. And it's kind of almost silly in retrospect, but it was called buy and hold. And it was by this older gentleman in California. And he basically said, just go buy enough properties to create the cash flow that you need to be financially independent and then just pay them off. And I was like, that's so easy. I can do that. It's very predictable, right? And then all I need to do is have a job where I can earn enough to pay these you know, properties off yep. in, a, in a 
fair, you know, in say 15 years and starting at 20 or 21, I was like, I'll be financially independent by the time 35, if I make a decent amount of money. Um, and that, that was, that's a simple plan. Um, and that's kind of really, and there's something bigger around that I want to talk about, but that's, that's really the, the, the book that I remember and I kept for a long time. I may still have it in my, uh, in my, in my cabinet here. I got to read a lot of the paper books I've converted to digital and a lot of things, but, um, buy and hold was that original book. Wow. Very cool. Buy and hold. It, it, you know, it, it's funny because I real estate isn't necessarily simple. I think the concept is very simple though. You know, buy and hold yeah. just makes sense. And, and, and there's so many different strategies, different asset classes. So, um, you know, it, it's, it, it does seem pretty simple and, and straightforward, at, at least from the overall process. Now, obviously it's, it's a lot more complicated than that, but um, it, it is just, Hey, buy, pay it off and you can retire, you know, with, with well, some nice cash flow. When I, you make a great point. Like it's, it's not, you know, I like to say like our strategy, like I talk about the value add strategy, which you're very familiar yeah. with in the multifamily space, Charlie. And, you know, if you're listening, you're, you're familiar too. listen to the podcast. It it's, it's not a super sexy strategy. You know, you don't go to a cocktail party like, oh, I, I tripled my money in, in a month by investing in this multifamily property. But I like to say it's sexy like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is not super sexy. He drives around in a Beetle. He eats McDonald's. And, you yeah. know, I don't think he's a, he's a sex symbol by any stretch of the imagination, but he's rich as can be, right? Yeah. So it's like, hey, you know, I want, I want things that are, that are simple to understand. Like, it might not be simple to implement and do that, but you know, if, if you and I put a strategy together and say, hey, we're going to invest in a property a year, it's going to have reasonable leverage, it's going to be cash flow positive, we're going to have reserves set aside, and we're we're going to own that until it's paid off. It's like that's a you know, anybody listening could buy a house and and do that and and implement that strategy. But it does take it does take a little time on the front end. It takes knowledge and really takes discipline, right? And I think, you know, knowledge is important. Putting your strategy together is important, but then you need some sort of accountability. I think that's why, you know, coaching, like we just, you know, to get back to that and, and accountability is important or having the right partner, the right spouse, you know, the right business partner. These things are super important. You know, after you put together something that might not seem that hard to implement, but you know, over time, you know, you got to be disciplined. Yeah, definitely. Um, you also talked about uh, some of the the so when you when you set off a, um, in a pursuit of knowledge, you read all those yeah. books. Uh, buy and hold uh, the book. Buy and hold really really stood out to you. Um, one thing that I absolutely love about real estate, regardless of what you invest in, is that control factor. And you you yes. you brought that up. Yeah. That um, the two main benefits that I heard was control and then the tax benefits. Yeah. Um, why do you think that you were so uh, drawn to real estate for the control factor as opposed to yeah. all the other benefits of it? Yeah. Ooh. Um, yeah. So maybe I'm a control freak and maybe it's because <laughs> of that. But um, no, in all, in all seriousness, there, there's a few different things. And um, I mentioned my father, he actually passed away when I was five. So I had a little oh, wow. bit of a chaotic you know, childhood. And it's like, how do you, you know, I like a clean desk. Like if you looked at my space, I got like my book and a notepad and um, I got two desks and there's like three books and, and that's it on all of them. So, you know, controlling my environment, you know, keeping kind of like a, a nice, nice uh, steady environment where I can then operate with a clean, clean mental space is important mm -hmm. to me. So in general, I'm just drawn to that. But I think, you know, being in the stock market and seeing those fluctuations and feeling them and watching my account go up and down, you know, that's the opposite, right? Of, of real estate, which is kind of slow and steady. Yeah. Um, so I like that. And now once you get to a bigger level and, and play big in the, in the stock, uh, stock market space, you know, you're really buying businesses like Warren Buffett, like Sam Zell, um, you know, then it's kind of the same thing because what are we doing with these commercial properties, Charlie? We're buying businesses, right? They right. just happen to be real estate. But here's here's the thing, and I kind of alluded to this earlier. I think there's there's several broken concepts when it comes to the financial world in this country. The first one is when you're young, take a lot of risk. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. Um, you know, we hear things like, oh, buy term, invest the difference. Um, you know, put money in your four hundred one k. Um, you know, take risk when you're young. It's like, well, wait a minute. If I could give you a plan to be financially independent in 10 years, 
say by the time you're 30 or 35 or 40 or even 50, how much risk can you take after you're financially independent from a financial perspective? You take a lot of risk, yeah. right? So I, I said, hang on a second. If I can become financially independent within a, within a range. So my plan wasn't perfect. I couldn't tell you exactly when I was going to hit financial independence, but let's say it was 10 to 15 years. Okay. I think that's a very reasonable time period for people. Um, but if you said five to 15 years and maybe 10 was the, the median. And if you just executed that strategy, buy these properties, pay off the mortgages, at some point you're going to be financially independent if, if you don't have excess leverage. Great. And then I knew I was free at that point. I could do what I want. I could go work for a startup. I could you know, invest in um, invest in a startup. I could invest in uh, you know, venture capital opportunities that are out there today, cryptocurrencies, different things like that, because I can afford to take the risk. So I think that was very appealing to me because I wanted that freedom and I wanted it in a predictable fashion. I'm also an engineer. So I was trained to solve problems and you, you make assumptions. And I think that's a real problem in society today as well, is that we have some false assumptions and we don't question our assumptions. So as an engineer, you right. make your assumptions, you solve the problem, you get a solution, and then you iterate. You say, hey, can we do this better? You test your assumptions. You see if you can solve it in a quicker, or better fashion. You improve upon that. So my brain was always looking at that and doing that. And as I looked at the problem, I said, okay, how can I solve this problem with the highest confidence interval, the highest degree of confidence that I can? And that's that's where the control piece came in. And then I said, okay, you know, if you don't have a lot of money, real estate is a great place because you have leverage. You can borrow money from the bank. Um, you know, those are all good things. And then you can actually fix up a property. And that's what really drew me to commercial real estate, you know, about 10 years ago, because I was like, wait, you can actually control the appreciation or force the appreciation like you really can't in a residential property. Right. Yeah, I, I love that. And, you know, ju just for the audience, uh, with a single family home, the, the way to quote unquote control the appreciation is through. Uh, you know, doing some rehab, right? Or, or yeah, great point. Uh, yeah. Build, you know, redoing the kitchen or adding a, a room or something. Um, but in in commercial property and not just multifamily, but commercial property, there's so many other ways besides just renovating. Um, you can reduce expenses. You know, you can um, tighten up the uh, the operations and, and and just make it run more efficiently. Where the property itself, it doesn't appreciate by one unit. If it's a hundred units, it appreciates by a hundred units. Right. And so, yeah. um, you know, I, I controlled to me is, is just amazing how, how you can control whatever you, you invest in, in real estate, whether it's a single family or commercial, you do have control. I, I, and, and you, Chris, probably were in the same boat here, but in commercial, you can control it just way more and, and just, uh, allows you to scale quicker and uh, because there's just so many more units. Um, That's wonderful. And, and then something else you mentioned um, that I, I kind of want to dig into a little bit. Uh, you, you did mention a, a 401k, you know, you're talking about <laughs> companies and and things like that. And, you know, it, you and I probably, Chris, we, we can't just go and buy, uh, you know, Geico insurance like uh, like Warren Buffett can, right? Or, or at least a huge, huge uh, chunk yet. of yeah. it, right? <laughs> I could probably buy one uh, one billionth of a of uh, of Geico, but um, uh, you know, I I, I think and something else you kind of hit on, Chris, was like the assumptions that we have are just the yeah. wrong, right? Um, so I want to touch on that because I, I think a lot of the audience, you know, a lot of a lot of my audience, um, they they listen to the show because maybe they don't know too much about what what else is out out there besides yeah. IRAs, four hundred one ks. That's what we if we were told anything at all. Um, we were told to invest, you know, put our money aside in IRAs, 401ks. I do think 401ks are okay because there is a match uh, with some companies, not, not, is, all, yeah, yeah. not all companies. Yeah. But then when you leave that, that company, you know, IRAs, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 401ks, they're just so confined. You don't have a lot of options. You mentioned control earlier. There's almost zero control. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of fees, you know, not great returns in general, if you exclude the company match. Um, so what, you know, let's talk a little bit about 
IRAs, 401ks, you know, and, and diversifying outside of those. Um, I, yes. I'm, I'm sure you have investors that have used, uh, they've rolled over IRAs and 401ks into your deals. Is that correct? Yeah, and use use a self-directed IRA, which is which can be a great tool, especially if you have a lot of a lot of capital locked up into the, one of these platforms. Um, and and look, I, I agree with you, Charlie. Like, if if you're working for a company, they give you a great match. Like, I worked for Medtronic for ten years, and I got a really really good match when I was with Medtronic. Um, so it was it was advantageous to fund my four hundred one k up to that point, but. You know what I was really, you know what I was really should have said and to clarify is qualified plans. So let's talk about the assumption with qualified plans that I find a lot of people haven't really thought through. Yeah. So if you if you invest today, so if you can invest a dollar, a hundred dollars, a thousand, hundred thousand dollars today, and you can get a ten percent return, should you put it into a qualified plan? It, and let's say your tax rate is twenty five percent. And your tax rate in the future is going to be 25%. So should you put in a qualified plan and not pay tax today and let it grow for say 40 years, let's say you're 25 and you take it out at 65, let it grow for 40 years and pay the tax in the future at 25%, or are you better off paying the tax today, letting it grow at at, at 10% and not paying the tax in the future? What's going to give you more? Using a Roth. Is that right? Is that what you're talking about? You could use a Roth. You could use a Roth, but here's the thing, and and I would say the Roth is is um, uh, potentially a better option. But here's the thing: the amount of money you get is the same, and a lot of people don't realize that. We think we'll have more in the future if we don't pay tax today and let it grow. The thing is, you're going to have to pay tax in the future. So if it's the same, if your tax rate's the same, what is the assumption? The assumption, and this is what I disagree with, is that your tax rate's going to be lower. Now, why would your tax rate be lower? The government could lower taxes. Mathematically impossible. What's uh, the uh, the office where the dude's saying false, yeah. right? <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I wish I had that meme, right? We could pop it up on a little uh, little screen here. False, right? The government can't lower tax rates, not, not at least in the foreseeable future. They can't balance the budget with lower tax rates. Okay, so no problem, Chris. I'm going to make less money when, when I'm uh, older. Okay. Well, if tax rates aren't going to go lower, they're probably going to go higher. So how much less are you going to make? And I don't like that deal. If you say to me, Hey, Chris, here's a deal. I'll lower your tax rate, but you have to agree to be either make less money or be worth less money in the future. I'll say, you know what? I'll bet on myself. I want to make more money. I want to be worth more money. I want to create more value in this world. So if you agree with what I just said, then a qualified plan isn't a great option. Here's the other problem. And I, I see you shaking your head up and down. You know, but the other problem is you, you lose control of that money. You can't yep. access it without penalty till you're 59 and a half. And then the other thing is, you know, you ultimately have to make required minimum distributions. Yep. And why is that? It's because the government wants you to pay tax on that money. They want to get their money back somehow. So if you want, if you're okay giving up control of your money, if you think the tax rate you're going to have in the future is going to be lower, then maybe, maybe a qualified plan is right for you. But as I as I talk about on our podcast and we talk about in our course, I believe the path to financial independence is through passive income. And if you want to have financial independence before most people traditionally achieve it, you know, in their 60s or 70s, then you can't have your money locked up in a qualified plan. You have to, you have to have access to that money outside of it. So I think if you look at the way the richest investors invest, the endowment funds, family offices, they're putting 20 to 30% of their money in income producing real estate. Mm. Okay. Put some money up to your match in your 401k, then get to work on creating passive income streams that are going to truly make you financially independent. I love that. Um, so just to recap that, uh, the, the, those qualified plans, which would be IRAs, 401ks, 403bs. Um, yes, thank you. Not necessarily terrible, but uh, what, what they yeah. do is they they um, don't let you access that money without penalty uh, until you're almost 60 years old. And at that point, you have to take out uh, minimum distributions per the Much government. In the 70s, yeah. Yep, you have to pay taxes on that. Um, and it, it really just kind of 
you know, I, I think most people are taught that, Chris, right, to to do IRAs, yeah. 401ks, because I will say it's better than nothing. But yes, at the absolutely. same time, um, that's not necessarily what the wealthy do. And and I think that that's, you know, as I've learned more and more now, granted, I didn't read 250 books like you did. But as, as I've learned more and more uh, about kind of how the wealthy invest, it is not at all like middle class, not at all. No. Um, what Dave Ramsey does and what he teaches are two different things. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. Not every, like, but if you're listening to this podcast, you are not poor. And I'm telling you, if you, if you do those things, that's, and here, here's why that's, you're poor. If you plan on just putting money into qualified plans, because you plan to be poor in the future, you plan yeah. to be, make less money. And that whole buy term invested difference is, is an extension of that, which is, Hey, I'm not going to need insurance in the future. Why is that? Oh, I'm going to have money in my qualified plans to live off of. So you're not going to leave money for future generations. Yeah. You're not going to leave money to, you know, charities. You're not going to, you know, create, you know, additional wealth and additional resources for the future. To me, that's not only a poor mentality, it's very selfish. Yeah. And it drives me crazy when people are like, oh no, this that's not a good idea to like buy life insurance. It's too expensive and this and that. It's it's actually very selfish not to, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. So so I'm gonna slightly pivot and you brought up term insurance. Um so term insurance and it it depends. Uh you, you actually had uh or maybe you still have it, Chris, but your your life insurance uh uh license license, right? Yeah. yeah um absolutely. And with term insurance, so that might be 20 years, 30 years, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, I, I heard a stat a couple of years ago that only 7% of term policies actually pay out. That means 93% don't pay out. Um, and I, I want to slightly pivot to whole life policies sure. um, and, and because we're talking about insurance and, and you brought up uh, term um, I, I know you do something a little bit uh, uh, called infinite banking. Um, do you want yeah, to talk a, it's about it? Yes, it's a version of the infinite banking concept. Okay. Correct. Do you want to talk about that just a little bit and, and sure. maybe uh, what infinite banking is or, or, or what you do, how you yeah. use it? Yeah. So let me let me like break down kind of the concept of you know term versus whole life and um, or traditional life insurance and, and talk about why I think you know by term invested difference is broken. So first off, there's a reason term is so cheap. You just said it. Only around seven percent of policies pay out. Mm-hmm. So you you know what percent of of whole life policies pay out if you pay your premium? I would think ninety nine or so because well, it, it's a hundred. It's a hundred percent. So you either even if you out like let's say the policy uh, it actually endows at a point. So if you live long enough, the insurance company will write you a check for the amount of the insurance. Isn't that gotcha. wild? Yeah, yeah. And you get guaranteed rates of return. It's and you can actually set up. It's basically like a personal pension plan. And yeah. here's the thing. You know, the 401k was designed to be part of a triad, which was going to be the pension from your company, your 401k and social security. Social security is broken. We talked about the bargain that you get with, you know, your qualified plans and most companies don't have pensions anymore. So now you're left with one leg of the three-legged stool. So how do you recreate those other legs? Life insurance is a great way to recreate a guaranteed income stream in retirement. So that's the first thing. But think about this. If you're listening, you're probably a fan of real estate. You understand some, at least some of the basic concepts of real estate. Term is renting insurance. And in most areas across the country, on average, renting is about 30% cheaper than buying. Okay. So and in most cases, unless you're unless you're very old, or I say very old, unless you're older term insurance is going to be less than whole life insurance. Now, why is that? Because just like buying a house and having a mortgage, and you can have a 15-year mortgage, a 30-year mortgage, you can have different terms on a life insurance policy. Your premium, just like your mortgage, is flat. It stays the same. Just like with renting, initially renting is cheaper. But if you rent for 30 years, eventually your rent is going to outpace what your mortgage is at some point. It's the exact same thing with, with life insurance. So at some point you're like, wow, it's not affordable to rent anymore. You know, I should have bought a house or maybe you got to move in with somebody. And that's why at some point the, the, the buy term and invest the difference advocates, they forget this part, which is I'm not going to have insurance at some point. Okay. And that's why I said, that's poor. That's poor people thinking. If you think that way, here's the other cool thing. And this is what we've really engineered and figured out and now optimized. And we actually call it the investment optimizer for this reason, 
because when you own whole life insurance, if you structure it properly, not only does the premium remain the same, but you actually build equity. So what happens is just like owning a house, if you buy a house and you uh, buy a $500,000 house and you put uh, 20% down, you put $100,000 down, right? If that house increases in value to 900,000, it went from 500 to 900,000, increased 400,000, you had $100,000 of equity. Now you actually have $500,000 of equity in that home that you paid $500,000 for. Yep. So somehow, you know, you're, you, it looks like your home didn't even double in price, but you made five times the money that you invested. Yep. It's the same thing in life insurance. What happens is this equity builds up. Now that house, you may say, well, that's great, Chris, but I can't, if I'm living in the house, I can't get access to it, but you can do a home equity line of credit. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is when you take money out of the house and home equity line of credit, you don't nice pay tax on that money. Yep. Yeah. It's the same thing in insurance. Yep. So what we do is we exploit all, all the various possibilities with insurance. We maximize the cash value. You can actually access that cash. You can access it for really anything you want. Now, I would advocate not using it to go buy like, you know, I think uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Kiyosaki calls them doodads, right? Like stuff, but buy income producing assets, yeah. but you can use it to buy a car and finance it yourself. You can use it to pay for your kid's college education. You can use it to invest in income producing real estate. We used it to build spec homes. So we'd lend to ourselves. We would build a spec home. We double our money in 12 to 18 months. We pay ourselves back with interest and we do it all over again. We recycle yeah. that cash through our insurance policy. And guess what? No banks required. Doesn't go in your credit report. Get the money in, in days, not weeks or months. It was incredible. And then here's the neat thing. You actually get a guaranteed. Now you can't say this with real estate or other investments, but you get a guaranteed rate of return inside of your life insurance policy. Yep. And usually it's even higher because you get, if it's structured properly with the right company, you get what's called a dividend. Now, why do you get a dividend? You get a dividend because insurance companies by definition must be profitable. If they're not profitable, they go out of business. The insurance companies we work with have been in business for 100, 150 years. They don't go out of business because it's all just math essentially. You know, so as long as like a, a you know, massive number of people don't die and that would be a, a, a world crisis that would be beyond what you would probably care about yeah. um, the, the rate of return you were getting at that point. But all things, you know, being within a, within a range, you typically get your guaranteed rate of return plus a dividend. And we've averaged five to 6% inside of our life insurance policies. And you mentioned tax-free. You can take that money out tax-free and you can actually take out up to your basis. So if you have a $5 million life insurance policy and you've put a million in, you can take a million out tax free. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say your cash value has grown to $2 million or $3 million. You can take that money out and pay tax, or you can take a loan out yeah. and not pay tax. Now, you might be saying, well, that's silly, Chris. Why would I borrow money and pay interest rate on it myself? Well, here's why you still get your guaranteed rate of return on that cash value, even if you borrow it, and you get the dividend, even if you borrow it, and it's tax free. And then when you pass away, if you have a $5 million policy, even if you've taken two or $3 million out, well, it just pays off that difference. Yep. And then your heirs are still left with the difference. And then what we do is we actually combine that with in our investment strategy. So any investor, if you're investing in cash flow real estate, can use this tool and it basically pays for itself. And you can increase your returns on your real estate and and really add, add a lot of power. So we have we actually have a, a whole site. It's uh, the banking website at nextlevelincome.com. Okay. And you can get a free white paper. You can get a free webinar. Um, obviously, I'm quite passionate about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's been, look, it also is very real to me because my father died when I was five. Yeah. And he had he actually accidentally had two life insurance policies, which fortunately gave us a little bit of money to go to college. So I was able to exit college without any debt. Um, so between working through college, getting in-state tuition, um, and a little bit of uh, capital that that was left over from uh, my father's life insurance policy really helped me out. Man, okay, so that was a lot. I, I would encourage the audience to either <laughs> go back and listen to that, um, but also reach out to Chris because I, I do this as well, Chris. Uh, my awesome. policy is only about three years old. I have not actually yeah. used it yet to borrow against uh, for investment deals. I'm going to. Um, yeah, we can I help. Op we can help give you some tools to really, really optimize that process. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, I uh, appreciate that. 
I, I'm, you know, in, in kind of going back to the wealthy, this is the wealthy uses yeah. strategy. A lot of uh, CEOs, Absolutely. executives, they actually get that in their compensation. Coaches. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, ath- it, athletic coaches. Yeah, absolutely. What does that yeah, tell you? Yeah. So, so yeah. very, very, very quick recap. Basically, um, you know, a lot of gurus say buy term insurance, invest the difference, meaning, you know, buy, buy a term policy for 50 bucks. And if whole life is going to be a thousand, then invest that 950 uh, into something. People don't do that. Let's just be honest. People don't do that. And then the other thing is that $50 uh, only 7% of people are going to get paid out that death benefit, right? So if you invest that in the whole life policy, uh, to your point, I, I think my policy runs out at 95, but then if if I live past 95, then I get uh, that lump sum at 95. Yeah. If they're cool. structured, yeah, if they're structured properly, um, they, they can be tax-free. If they're not structured properly, they may be taxed. So uh, talk to Great Chris, point. talk to Great talk to point. people that that know that. Yeah. I don't know how that works, but uh, Chris and other yeah. people do. Yeah. Um, that, that's a great point. Yeah, I think real quick, um, these life insurance policies were so tax friendly that they were used as tax shelters like yeah. all, all the way up until the 80s. And then they re uh, the IRS put new regulations in. So we do there are rules that you have to follow and do that. And really any any decent insurance agent should be able to have you follow those rules. But really the key is structure it properly with the right insurance company. Yes. And then you also need to work with somebody that understands your goals and as as an investor, if you're really going to utilize this, because if you don't, and I didn't do this initially, this is why I do what I do now, but my agent didn't teach me this. I had to learn it all myself. Now we teach others how to do it. Yeah. Definitely reach out to Chris because there, there's so many caveats with that. Um, and you want to talk to someone that also is a uh, real estate investor. Um, when, when I got my first policy, I kind of told him what I was looking for. And yeah. anyway, di- different story. Um, but um, anyway, yeah. So reach out to Chris because it, it, it is truly, it, you know, no one teaches this to you. Um, you you kind of have to learn it on your own, I think, and, and hear other people talk about it. But uh, Chris can be a huge, huge help there. Um, Chris, I, I know you, you mentioned a couple of other things that I want to highlight. Um, you've held up your book. You've talked about your book a couple of times, but um, talk talk more in depth about your book. Like what, what's the book called? Uh, yeah. What do you cover and how can people find it? Yeah. So if you want a free copy of Next Level Income, go to the website, nextlevelincome.com. If you click on the book link and you put your address in, my team will send you a copy. And really, you know, the, the subtitles, how to make, keep and grow your money using the Holy grail of real estate to achieve financial independence. And, you know, I know, I know you're a huge fan of multifamily as well, Charlie. So I talk a little bit about my story, my background, um, why, why I got into real estate initially and ultimately why I transitioned to commercial real estate, which we touched on, you know, a lot of that control and forced yeah. appreciation. Um, but then I also talk about the importance of teams and, you know, and what to look for. And then we've, we've actually expanded, the concepts within the book into a course. And we have a spreadsheet now as well called our LP deal analyzer. Cool. So if, yeah. So if, if you read the book, you know, you're like, Oh, it's about multifamily real estate. We do, we do a lot of other types of real estate, but they all revolve around that value add strategy. Um, but what, what started is, you know, kind of a, a small handbook, if you will, Charlie, um, into kind of how to, how to think about real estate and put together a plan. Um, we've expanded on that. And the spreadsheet specifically, you know, if, if you are trying to vet syndicators or follow your deals, it's called the LP Deal Analyzer. It's under the resources link on our website. Um, we have a special code. It should be up there. It's next level um, that you can use. But it has all the questions to ask when you're talking to a new sponsor or syndicator. Okay. So if if you're like getting started and you're like, why well, don't, Chris, I don't even know you know, I, I like the concept. I've talked to Charlie about getting into multifamily real estate, but I don't even know the right questions to ask. That, that's that's scary, right? It's scary if you don't know what questions to ask. We give you those questions. If you're if you're a nerd like me and you're really into analytics and stuff, we give you even more questions to ask, and then we help you break it down and do a scoring into a into a quantitative system. So we give you the qualitative questions, the quantitative system. And then we give you a tracker in there as well. So you can track your investments and, and see what they return month to month, quarter to quarter and do that. And that was developed with my partner, Sam, who's a physician as well as a real estate investor. Um, and we've, we've gotten a lot of terrific feedback on that. It's also, it's also free if you buy the course, which is on the website too. Awesome. And that's, that should be the same discount code next level 
um, which gives you uh, 500 bucks off the course. Okay. Um, and and um, can you go into a little more detail about the course? Uh, uh, what, what's yeah. it called? Yeah. So it's uh, your, your uh, six figures of passive income roadmap. Okay. So who it's for is somebody that is you're either now, if, if you're not a high income professional yet, we can help you help put together your, your three life, your uh, three year vision, help you strategies to make more money. But even if you're out there and you're professional and you're trying to figure out, Hey, how can I optimize my time, my life? We give you strategies to create 20 to 40 hours more a week to wow. look at deals, to start a side business, to, to work out more, to spend more time with your family. We also have strategies in there to keep more money, tax strategies, legal strategies, my accountant, I'm sorry, my attorney put his whole course in there, his whole legal course for free inside of our course. Wow. So you get access to his whole course inside of there. Um, tons of resources in there. And then ultimately how to grow your money. And that really revolves around how to analyze deals, but really, do you want to be an active investor? Do you want to be a passive investor? help you to figure that out. And then the spreadsheet is kind of the culmination of that last part of the course, which is how do you vet deals? How do you do that? And with that discount code, the course is it's less than a thousand dollars. And what you get is really the framework that my coaching clients pay $2,500 a month to get. Wow. Okay. So, um, it, there's a lot in there. So you have the book, obviously, uh, you have a course, six figures of passive income roadmap. Uh, with that course, there's an LP deal analyzer. And I think you also mentioned, Chris, um, you have that LP deal analyzer separately as well. Is that correct? Separate as well. Okay. That's right. You can grab that separate too, if, if that's okay. interesting too. Yeah. And you have uh, ways to vet deals. Uh, you, you help people. Uh, you coach people. We talked about the coaching uh, at the beginning yeah. of the call. So you coach people to do this. Uh, man, you, you got a ton of irons in the fire, but I know, uh, it, what, what's really a great cool, team around us. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's really cool about you, Chris too, is, you know, you, you've been doing this a long time. Now you're giving back, you're, you're kind of, uh, offering, uh, newer investors, a lot of different kind of whatever content that they want. And, and you know, you're offering that to them, uh, with the book, with a, probably more of a full blown course. And then even more than that, like uh, personal coaching and, and uh, coaching. Um, I love that. And just, just, uh, I, I meant to bring this up earlier and I haven't, but for the audience, uh, Chris has used two terms kind of interchangeably force appreciation and value add. So just, just to, mm, yeah. uh, it should have said this a long time ago, but it, they are the same. So forcing appreciation and value add, um, you know, adding value to a property doesn't necessarily mean renovating it. It can, but it could also Great mean point. adding yeah. amenities or uh, uh, more streamlining the operations, whatever it is. Um, but by doing that, it forces the appreciation of that property. So my apologies to the audience should have kind of, um, you know, covered that probably 20, 30 minutes ago. Uh, but at least I'm I'm hitting it now. Um Chris, I, I know we have a few minutes left, so want to yeah. want to see, and you know, for you, this is probably more relevant because you you are a big reader. But uh, what's a recent book? I know you mentioned Buy and Hold Ooh. already, and you have your yeah. your your current book. Yeah. Uh, but besides those two books, what's a recent book that you've read or, or listened to that really stands out to you? Real estate, business, help, uh, self help related. Yeah. So. Um... When I work with my coaching clients, there's you know, we have a few different categories, but the number one category is health. And I think that that's really important. And when I used to coach and hire and train uh, sales reps, I said, look, you need to live like a professional athlete. I think this is important for anybody. Like, you know, whether you're you're a father or a mother and you, know, you just want to have the most energy for your kids, you know, at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, um, whatever it is, if you want you know, enough brain power and mental acuity so you can analyze a deal or get something done. Super important. One of the best book, books I've read is called Lifespan. It's by David Sinclair. Okay. And again, you can tell I'm big on um, kind of mindset. And one of the things that he talks about, Charlie, is aging is not a disease. It's not inevitable. And it's, I'm sorry, is a disease. It's not inevitable. Is that what, yeah, it's, so you can actually treat the disease. And he talks about how to do that in his book. So I'm a big believer. I, you know, I do everything I can for my health. Um, you know, I, I want to live, I want to live to get that check from the insurance company. Yeah. Um, 
And I want to, I also want to live so I can make the biggest impact in the world. I think that's really important. And I think when you, when you retrain or reshape your thoughts to say, Hey, I'm not going to die at 80. I'm going to live to 90, a hundred, 110, 120. How would you live your life differently? Yeah. You know, love that. and I love, love that because you can really have a massive impact and change on your life. If you're able to, if you're able to change that piece. Love that. Um, okay. So the book was lifespan by David Sinclair. Lifespan by David Sinclair. Awesome. What can people expect to see from you and your business yeah. over the next few years? Yeah. Oh, so first off, you, you, you kind of had a great highlight there. So look, our mission is to help you achieve financial independence through financial education and financial opportunities. So the book is free. The podcast is free. The blog is free. We even have a free trial of the course that's up there um, on the website. So tons of free resources. You can dive deeper, you know, if you want to get the course and do that. But also if you're, if you're already at the point where you're accredited, you want to invest. Um, not only do we do multifamily, um, but our fastest growing area for investors has been our car wash space. So if you're interested in looking more into the investments that we have out there, you can click on the invest link and we're going to continue to look and find what we feel are the best areas of opportunity for the future. I'm, I'm driven largely by demographics, as I talk about in my book. Yeah. And we got a couple of things that we're working on here um, for the next several years for investors as well. That's awesome. And I know earlier in the conversation, you mentioned that uh, you have over uh, 3,000 apartment units. Yeah. Uh, I believe you said 10 mobile home parks. Uh, I didn't catch the number, but you have car washes, self-storage. I really think uh, you know the, the multifamily is like a great yeah. baseline. Um, but I think a lot of the same strategies uh, are applied with mobile home parks, self-storage, car wash. You know, there's obviously nuances, but uh, yes. I am very bullish on all, well, obviously multifamily, but those other three as well, because I, I think, um, you know, especially with mobile home parks, uh, it provides shelter, self-storage, you know, if people move into a, or uh, move their stuff into a self-storage, they don't really move out, right? Uh, let, let's Crazy, be honest, right? But, yeah. But anyway, uh, so I, I love all four of those asset classes so much. Um, so Chris, what is the best way for people to reach uh, reach you? Yeah, I think the best thing is to go to the website, Charlie, nextlevelincome.com. Okay. And you can, you can kind of hunt around on the website for everything that we've talked about today. There's also a contact tab there. So if you have anything specific you want to discuss with me or the team, um, feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to help you achieve financial independence or just take that next step on your way there. Awesome. Very cool. Um, and the uh, website again, nextlevelincome.com. And then there's also nextlevelincome.com slash book. I'm going to put those in the show notes for it, uh, for the audience. Um, man, Chris, I, this has been amazing. We have talked um, about so much. I, I love the, um, you know, the mental health side of things, the health side of things. Um, we, we talked a lot about what, what wealthy do that, uh, middle-class don't do. And I think that's a huge, huge, um, topic that we could talk about for hours and hours, but, um, Certainly. unfortunately we, we don't have the time, but I definitely recommend to the audience, reach out to Chris. Uh, I know he's on LinkedIn as well. Uh, but, but go to the website, um, download the book and, uh, you know, if you're interested in the course, if you're interested in, in uh, uh, infinite banking and the, the whole life insurance, please talk to Chris because he he's much better at that than I would ever be. But uh, Chris, thank you for being here, man. It's been great talking to you and learning. Charles, it's been my pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And uh, thanks for listening today. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Bye. Thank you for listening to today's show brought to you by H&K Investment Group, your home for passive investing. If you want to learn more about how you can invest with us, please check out our website at hkigllc.com. Don't forget to like this episode and subscribe to our podcast. Please leave us a review to let us know how we are doing. Feel free to connect with me directly on LinkedIn or Facebook. As always, I'm your host, Charlie Hardage. Catch you next time.